Hi everybody, I'm Amy from From the Cauldron and in today's episode of Dye Time I want to use up the rest of this cyan stock solution that I made in April 2022. So it's a bit, it's quite old, you can see there's only the tiniest amount left. Now when I get new dyes I like to dye up 10 grams of yarn just to test what they look see what the dyes look like. So I've got a whole bunch of them here and I'm slowly going through these to over dye them. So you'll see these in future videos. This is the yarn I'm going to be using today. It is 10 grams of a of a superwash merino nylon blend in four ply and it has been dyed with one percent in a one percent depth of shade of elven lily which is fiber reactive dye from Dharma. First things first See, the water is already boiling and I am just going to pour in the rest of that turqu not turquoise, cyan. You can see there's a bit of muck down the bottom. I'm going to add a bit more water to this and get all of that dye out. There's still a lot of solid there. I don't know if it's stained or what. I'm going to add a bit more water. Still a lot of uh, colour at the bottom, it may be stained and uh, <laughs> I should have worn my gloves because these bottles are not <laughs> waterproof and it seems to be this cyan just gets absolutely everywhere. I can't seem to get the rest of this out, it might be stained, I'm going to try soaking this now and fingers crossed I don't have to throw this bottle away. I'm going to add in, oops, probably two tablespoons of vinegar. So that's the acid that we need, as I've got an animal fibre. Animal fibres need heat as and acid. What I want to do is fold this in half, like that, and then just... Sort of, ooh, that's pretty. I'm just going to wrap it round, sort of it that way. So I've still got some yarn that is not purple but that blue is really pretty. So now I'm just going to leave this. Now I'm, I'm going to leave it because I, I don't mind there being a line between these colours. Uh, I kind of want that actually. I don't want a dip dyed effect. I want to, the tips are blue and the rest of it is purple but I'm not sure how much of it is actually going to be purple. I think this blue is going to take over somewhat. So I'm going to leave this here and if it doesn't absorb all the colour, I've got a load more of these I can just stick in. This has been on the heat for 15 minutes and there is still loads of colour left in here, which I'm not surprised. This cyan is quite a strong colour. So I'm just going to unwrap a bit of that add some more in. Although it doesn't look like, it, you know, a lot of the colour has absorbed to the yarn, that is a very pretty colour there and you can see the bit that I've just dipped in is nowhere near as strong as uh, that is. So I'm going to leave it like that and we'll come back a bit later. I'll leave, I don't know how long I'm going to leave this for. I would really like to try and preserve some of that elven lily but if I don't, I don't. It's not the end of the world. This is just a little fun experiment to see. May need to over dye some yarn that I've got and to use up that last of the cyan. This has been on the heat for another 20 minutes and there is maybe the tiniest hint of blue left in here. So what I'm going to do is just dunk it all in now can see that is still nice and purple. The colour running off that is clear which I'm very happy about. So I'm going to just leave this for probably about 20 minutes while I have some lunch and then I can take it off the heat and let it cool down. It's been about another 20 minutes and that water running off is clear. It looks like the water in there is clear as well which is fantastic. So I'm going to turn this off the heat and let this cool down so that I can wash it. This yarn has completely cooled down now so let's wash it. I'm not expecting there to be any bleeding, fingers crossed. It 
doesn't look like there's any bleeding. Brilliant. I'm going to add a little bit of washing up liquid. Now I did manage to completely clean out this bottle. There was an awful lot of dye that had come out of solution and solidified on the bottom of this. So I have no idea sort of how much dye was actually in the, in the stock solution. And now I am seeing a bit of bleeding. Not to worry, um, I know I said I wasn't expecting it, but it's not a surprise because those blues, the cyans, the turquoises, they can be a bit temperamental sometimes. They, they do require extra, bleed, extra washing because they do bleed. I don't like how much color there is coming out of this. That's annoying, but it's not actually changing the color of the yarn at all. It's uh, when, when this color starts fading, that's a problem. When you can see the, the, the color coming out, it's a problem. But this is just annoying more than anything. I've got a few other things that needs washing as well. So I'm going to be standing here at the sink for a while. This can just soak in some water with soap. And here is the finished yarn. Now this yarn did bleed continue to bleed quite a bit. So I did put it back on the heat for a little bit to try and get some more of the dye to set to the yarn. And it did, but it still bled even more. So if this was a skein of yarn that I was gonna sell, I wouldn't, I would keep it for myself because I wouldn't be happy sending this out to someone. Now if we have a little look at my swatches, those, are the original colours. This, this, well, this was the original colour, the Elven Lily. You can see, I think you can still see hints of that through the turquoise, the cyan there. But uh, that Elven Lily has pretty much gone. And then if we look at this 1% depth of shade of cyan, you can see what was left in there was definitely a lot more concentrated. And that's a big problem with the turquoises and the cyans. Uh, they are, well, they can be so pigmented that a tiny little bit goes a long way. So even though there was probably not much more than maybe a tablespoon that of uh, dye left in my dye bottle, that was a very concentrated amount of dye. I won't be using cyan at quite so high concentrations again. Despite the bleeding problems, I think this is still a very pretty skein of yarn. And it's one of the reasons why I like experimenting on these 10 gram skeins. Uh, I would be absolutely devastated if I had done this on a 100 gram skein of yarn, only to have it constantly bleed and just, it. Would, I would either have to keep it for myself and then be extremely careful when I used it, or just bin it in the end if it just didn't stop bleeding. But this is a 10 gram skein of, of yarn and it's gonna go into my scrappy blankets. Even though it was still bleeding, I'm not that, that worried because it's only 10 grams and I am keeping it as well. I would not be sending this out to any customers at all. I would never send out yarn to a customer that I wasn't happy with and that I wouldn't personally use. Uh, if you'd like to buy any of my yarns, I don't actually have a website at the moment, but I am working on it and I'm hoping to get it finished soon. So in the meantime, you can contact me through social media. I am from the cauldron everywhere. Send me a message and I'm sure we can arrange something. I do custom colorways as well, so we can have a little chat if there, so if there's something you have in mind that you'd like or if you'd like a surprise uh, send me a message and we can have a little chat about it. I publish new dyeing tutorials every Monday usually around about 6 p.m. UK time and I do like to do different things in my videos. I do like to experiment particularly with these little skeins of yarn so there should always be something different and interesting to watch. Thank you so much for watching.